Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Gisela, and I will be the host for today's webinar, Compliance Made Easy with JAMA Connect for Automotive and Semiconductor Development. Before I pass it over to our speakers, let me go over a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen, you will find multiple applications engagement tools. You can adjust their size and position to optimize your computer screen. To expand your presentation area or maximize it to full screen, simply click to the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any audio or video issues, you can find answers to some common technical questions located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. Please note that a copy of today's slide deck and additional resources are available in the resources list. Have a look and download everything that you may find useful. Also, this webinar will be recorded and sent via the email you registered with. Lastly, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We are here to answer you live via the chat throughout the presentation, so don't hesitate to reach out. In case we run out of time or we don't manage to answer your questions, we will make sure to follow up later by email. Now, I would like to introduce our speakers. Today, we are joined by Steve Rush. He's the principal consultant at JAMA Software with more than 10 years of experience in software and implementation. Over the past four years, Steve has worked closely with JAMA's partners network and customers focusing on automotive industry. He also provides training and consultation to JAMA customers at different stages of their JAMA adoption. We are also joined by Sam Yeramala. He is a senior consultant at JAMA Software, working with automotive and semiconductor customers for two years. He's helped train, launch, implemented, and optimized several automotive and semiconductor customer JAMA environments. He has a background in system and safety engineer with over 15 years experience in product and project management, control systems, simulation, and worked in automotive and aerospace industries. And with that, I will pass it over to Steve. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here today to take you through the presentation. I wanted to start with a high-level agenda and an introduction. We'll be discussing automotive compliance in general to start. We'll be looking at specific service offerings here at JAMA that you can use to help leverage to evaluate your compliance against certain automotive standards. We'll talk a little bit about the outcomes and the benefits you will see from these diagnostics, an overview of the process so you can better understand the time commitment and what to expect from the diagnostic. And finally, some working exercises where we'll use parts of each diagnostic offering through a sample scenario. And this will involve a short capability demonstration. So you will see how JAMA solves certain compliance problems for each of these scenarios. Demonstrating compliance in, auto in an automotive product or systems development is obviously very crucial. There are two forces often related that I like to think about when it comes to compliance that really impact the organization as a whole, from engineers to executives and everybody really in between. And those are process and quality. And I like to think about compliance as the intersection of those two often related ideas. Meeting the objectives of these standards may achieve both process and quality, but by developing a compliant process and system, this will speed up development by instituting good process and reducing rework. It will help catch and identify defects early in the development process. However, there's many evolving regulations and standards in this automotive sector that make the idea of comp compliance all the more challenging to understand, let alone demonstrate. Perhaps you don't even know where to start when it comes to achieving compliance in an automotive system. It might feel like you are building a car while it's driving at the same time, tasked with implementing the process and tools to support the process and unsure which should come first. And we want to talk a little bit about this through the lens of compliance and make the case that JAMA is a tool well-suited to get you up and running quickly, optimized against popular automotive standards. To assist with this, we'll discuss the diagnostic that, that JAMA offers as a service that'll help you navigate these important compliance questions. But I fully believe that by meeting the objectives of some of these critical automotive standards we will discuss today, that you'll balance both process and quality and achieve compliance. So today we're highlighting some offerings that will help guide automotive customers or prospects, prospects like you with your compliance process. 
we feel these diagnostics can be very helpful, whether you are a customer of JAMA or a prospect. If you're a JAMA prospect who's not yet purchased JAMA, these diagnostics makes the case that JAMA can help you meet the objectives of the automotive standards. And namely, there they are three standards offerings that we uh, provide. One is the ASPICE diagnostics, the automotive functional safety diagnostics, and the cybersecurity diagnostics. Now, these diagnostics can help you navigate the classic process versus tool conundrum. That is, if you're trying to understand whether you should build the process first or buy the tool first, you will first uh, see firsthand how JAMA will help shape the process. If you're a JAMA customer, you can use these diagnostics as a baseline. Oftentimes, we get busy with our day-to-day -day work, and we may drift away from the larger big picture. That what the And these diagnostics are meant to guide you to bring light uh, into areas of imp that you need improvement or any optimization of your current JAMA process. You can also be paired with a JAMA consultant or a solutions architect who will take you through the diagnostics start to finish. The time commitment for each of these diagnostics is about two to three hours. Uh, we feel that's reasonable considering the benefits you may get out of this. We focus on the outcomes and the objectives um, and how this will truly help uh, meet your compliance needs by optimizing your JAMA usage if you're a customer and or getting up and running in JAMA if you're a prospect who's looking for purchasing JAMA. You can see these diagnostics offerings uh, along with other offerings that we provide on the JAMA Success Program page at jamasoftware.com slash success. Here you'll see details on the compliance offerings that we just mentioned and a lot more other offerings, including offerings on onboarding Java, improving your process and requirements quality, traceability, et cetera. You can also request an offering if you have a service program but no assigned consultant and our operations team will pair you up with someone. So as far as the automotive standards and alignments are concerned, the diagnostics offerings that we um, provide um, are aligned to the three standards, the Automotive Spice ISO 26262 and, and ISO 21434. Only certain areas of those standards may be in scope, are in scope. For example, things like part seven of the ISO 26262 for production and operation and decommissioning are not covered here. But you will see some of these sections here are covered by the diagnostics. So depending on which diagnostics is right for you, uh, the risks that are identified will align to the different um, areas that you see on the screen. Now, it may be that you want to align to more than one standard. We certainly put you through multiple diagnostics to identify your risks pertaining to each of these standards. The model which we use is the same, but the recommendation we provide and tailored solution that uh, the diagnostics provides will be custom based on each scenario. And uh, if you know, if you don't know where to get started, um, or you don't know which one, which of these diagnostics that you need to start first, some things are obvious. Uh, again, that if you're looking for cybersecurity compliance and that is of the greatest concern for you, then the cybersecurity diagnostics, the 21434 is right. And if you're looking for uh, developing any functional safety products that are used in the automotive, then the ISO 26262 diagnostics is the uh, correct one to start with. And if you're looking for any software process improvements, then the ASPICE or quality management, then the ASPICE is the um, place to start. But sometimes you need both ASPICE and functional safety, for example, in which case we suggest the ASPICE diagnostics first. Um, and the reason is that we rank in the process ASPICE about the functional safety is that if you have a high level of ASPICE maturity, on, or on the other side, if there are several risks that are flagged from the ASPICE diagnostics, then those will impact uh, your functional safety diagnostics already. So you would have covered those parts of it that as a prerequisite for the functional safety. Um, and then the spirit of ASPICE is really in the quality management, and this is important in every engineering organization. So if you're unsure where to start, um, then ASPICE diagnostics is one place. And if you don't need to prove compliance to the latter, it's really good because honoring it will yield benefits in your process. Great. So I want to talk a little bit about the process for these services offerings. Each of the offerings will guide you through where a select group of users and experts, insofar as they exist within your organization, uh, will go through the diagnostic process. Now, just to be clear, this is not a full compliance audit. Um, it is a shorter risk assessment of your current processes that are in scope for the different process areas that Sam just talked about. The goal of the diagnostic 
is to take these off, oftentimes vague instructions that are part of the standards and put them into something a little bit more actionable with some definitions and align those to different capabilities within JAMA. For each diagnostic, the same is true for the ASPICE diagnostic, the functional safety diagnostic, the cybersecurity diagnostic. A JAMA consultant will guide you through the process. Firstly, the diagnostic itself, which is usually a one-hour interview, where the aforementioned subject matter experts will meet with your JAMA consultant and will ask you a series of questions pertaining to each of the standards that are in scope for these process areas and engineering disciplines. Um, we're going to go through a sample exercise a little later on, so you'll be able to see what some of these questions are and some of the answers that you can provide from the diagnostic. So after we collect the responses given in that interview, we'll do a risk assessment against all of the in-scope areas. You'll be rated as either a high risk, medium risk, or low risk against all of these different areas. And then finally, a tailored demonstration will, present, will be presented back to you, um, scheduled at a, a future date after the, after the interview and risk assessment. We will communicate the high and medium risks and explain the different capabilities in JAMA that will help reduce those risks from high or medium to a low risk. So it'll take the form of a tailored presentation and demonstration by the JAMA consultant so we can explain in depth how and why to adopt a certain area of JAMA and the capabilities within JAMA and how those will align to a different section of the, of the standard and how that might reduce the risk. So just to talk a little bit about the benefits that you would see from this. So what you will learn at the end of this are those risks against different areas. So what you're seeing here is a, a quick table, um, a summary chart that we provide in our reports for uh, the functional safety diagnostic to um, compliance risk. So your JAMA consultant will provide a recommendation for reducing those risk areas, which will be helpful because it will turn all of this process and this diagnostic into something actionable that you might be able to use within JAMA really right away. Some proof that we can move just beyond sort of like generalizations and move this into actual capabilities and processes that you can implement in JAMA. The nature of the diagnostic, I like to think of it sometimes as a prioritization exercise. To be honest, some of the mitigations that we identify will be harder and more expensive to achieve. Like if you have no traceability to automated testing pipelines, the mitigating recommendation might be to build an integration into automated testing so you can trace requirements to unit tests. Um, you'll need to go through discovery of that use case, technical design, implementation, testing, launch to build this integration. And to be frank, this is a lot of work. Uh, what if the tools that you're using are missing some technical capability like an API service or a critical field within the API? This all becomes really frankly, expensive to accomplish. Whereas if we identify a risk in your review process or that you're not capturing release or configuration data correctly in the tool and you are already a JAMA customer, this is much more attainable by, just by changing your use patterns within the tool. You can start using existing cap capabilities really right away. Um, the bar to uh, mitigating that compliant risk is much, much lower. So if we were to flag these two risks sort of side by side, the, the review risk versus the integration risk, that would help inform us on a prioritization exercise, like which one we should tackle first. So by hardening our review process, that would win out because it's much much easier to achieve than building out like a new integration, um, which needs uh, quite a lot of work. So with that context, let's look at a few examples for each of the diagnostics, and we'll provide some capabilities in JAMA that will help mitigate certain risks that are flagged in the reports.